Hi guys, welcome to Debt Free Friday. I'm so excited. This is the third week of Debt Free Friday. I've really enjoyed this. If you're new, hi, my name is Gia and welcome. And if you're already subscribed, thank you so much for coming back. So um, if you missed the first two episodes of Debt Free Friday, I will insert a card here and I will also link the playlist down below. Uh, the first episode I talked about my husband and I and how our journey to becoming debt free, we've been debt free for about a year now. Um, and kind of like the process that we did to get there, but not in detail. Um, and then uh, last week's episode was about just, you know, five tips that kind of helped us really stay grounded and stay on our path to becoming debt free. So this week I wanted to talk about creating a budget from scratch, okay? Um, I know for all of my planner ladies out there, I know creating a budget binder is very, very popular and <clears throat> it seems fun, but I prefer Excel because it's just uh, less room for error. Cause you know, when you're dealing with finances, you want to be as precise and as exact as you can. So a lot of times when you're using a budget binder, even though you're using a calculator, you can accidentally write something wrong or transpose numbers or anything, even though it's fine to, to have a budget binder. If you like that kind of stuff, you know, just do what works best for you and your family. I'm just going to share what's works best for my husband and I that we've been using for years. Um, it's a really simple, clean Excel template that clearly lists everything. And the type of budgeting that I do is zero based budgeting, which means every penny has a name. So every amount of money and income that comes into the house gets budgeted into a certain category or gets allocated to towards something, whether it's debt, sinking funds, savings, bills, whatever you may want to allocate it towards that, everything has a name. So I'm going to share with you my template and how I use it and how I pretty much create a budget for the entire year. Um, and this really works well for people who are like salaried, who pretty much know what their salary is going to be, but you know, anything can happen. So of course, you know, um, you can change it at any time. And even if you do have an income where it's, you know, different from month to month or from week to week, you'll, you'll still be able to use this. So let's jump right on in. This is the template that I use. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a fictional family. This fictional family's name is, let's see. Okay. They're, this fictional, fictional family's name is the Joneses and that's no, you know, shade towards anybody whose last name is real Joneses, but you know, uh, there's that saying is people always like to keep up with the Joneses. I always say don't keep up with the Joneses because the Joneses are broke. So we'll just name this fictional family Joneses. And what I did was I pulled some census data, uh, for the average income for a family of four for all 51 states. And that average income of all the 51 states for a family of four was $75,000. So I created this, this budget in mind with this fictional family who have a take home of $75,000 and they have the, the three biggest debts that, you know, keep the middle class in the middle class, which are, you know, credit cards, student loans, and, um, uh, car notes. So, this is what you see here. So this sheet right here is pretty much the main sheet that I create, um, you know, our annual budget for. So, um, what I do here is everything that's highlighted in yellow are the cells that you enter numbers in. You do not need to enter numbers here or here because it automatically populates it for you. So for instance, we're going to type in 27,500 for income one and 27,500 for income two. And then, you know, we'll, we'll just say a tax refund of 3000. Um, I'm just, like I said, I'm pulling these numbers out of the air. Um, but I said, uh, I total it to be 55,000 because on average for someone who makes $75,000 after taxes are taken out, usually the take home is around 55,000. But again, you know, use this as, as with discretion because you know, everybody's deductions are different. So as you can see, it automatically populates to the monthly column because that's your take home monthly pay. 
Now granted, you only get one tax refund a year, but that's okay because once you, you get that lump sum once per year, you know, you, you spread it out throughout all of the months because we know that that money is coming. Since we know that money is coming, it has to be budgeted. So over here is I, you just put in your monthly bills. So again, these are, this is kind of similar to what my husband and I use. Ours are, are you know, kind of different, except especially our sinking funds, but I'll get to that in a minute. So you have your basic home um, bills, which is, you know, your home phone. I just put 20 bucks, internet, 30 bucks, cable, 100 bucks, electricity, 150. It's kind of high. Let's just put that down to 100. Gas, 150. This is on average how much you spend per year. It, it, of course, it varies in different parts of the country and in different times of the year, but this is on average how much you would spend a year. And if you don't have these calculations, um, it's okay to just guess. You can always come back in and update it as you get more comfortable budgeting and as you, um, you know, understand your bills and how they work a little bit more. I put an average amount of $1,200 for a mortgage, $50 a month for water. So then this next section is your bills. And this is, you know, I just put these three in here, cell phone, student loans, credit cards, and car notes, okay? So at this point, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you these other three tabs. These are all amortization schedule, schedules, which means it's pretty much a, a schedule of each payment, how much you're paying towards interest, how much you're paying towards principal, the ending balance, and then how long it'll take you to pay it off, right? So you don't need to enter anything down here. Everything gets entered here. This fictional family, the Joneses, they have $10,000 worth of credit card debt. Now, I did not create this template. This came straight out of Excel, and it's free, and it's downloadable. And I'm also going to make this whole file accessible to you guys. So I put the loan amount here of $10,000. You put your annual APR interest rate here. I just guessed 18,000, or excuse me, 18%, okay? And this is another point where you have to sit and talk to your spouse or your partner and just really kind of define how long you wanna to take to pay off your debt. Now, I say that because you can't just throw all your cash at your debt, just like I talked about, um, you know, when I was talking about our journey, we saved a ton of cash throughout the entire time of us paying off our debt because I did not want to get back in debt if an emergency would arise. Like, you know, I had mentioned that our house, you know, got struck by lightning. We had to come up with $2,000 for that. We had a busted water main break. We had to come up with $1,000 for that. We had to get our house painted. We had to come up with $3,000 for that. And all of that time, we kept, we just used cash because our sinking funds were so, um, loaded so that we would be able to do that. And that's why it took us a little bit longer. And I didn't mind that because again, I wanted to end the cycle of getting back into debt. So I just said three years, um, for this fictional family, it's going to take them three years. They have a total debt of $45,000. They have $10,000 in credit cards. They have $20,000 in student loans and they have $15,000 in a car loan. Okay, so since we said three years, that makes their payment, they have to pay $361.52 in 36 payments in order to pay back um, their credit card. And then for student loans, it's the same thing. You put in your balance here, $20,000. I figured that's on average for two, a couple of two who both have student loans. I don't know if that's an accurate in percentage rate for student loans these days. Um, it could be something completely different, but again, you are gonna fill this out with your information, okay? We're gonna do three years again. And oh, it's important to indicate your start date of 1116. I'm just starting this family. This family's gonna start this budget on January 1st, 2016, but you can change that at any point in time, whenever you wanna start this process, okay? So you would put whatever date you want to in here. Just to be clean, I just said, let's start it on 1-1-2016, okay? There's 12 payments per year, and we're gonna do it for three years. So they have to pay $599.42 each month in order to pay this loan back of $20,000 for their student loan. Same process for the car note. $15,000, I put that the annual interest rate is 12%. We're gonna pay it back in three years. The start date is 1-1-2016. And at any point in time, you could say, you know what? 
I want to pay more money. I want to pay extra money. You can always put an extra amount here. Say you want to pay an extra $50. If you paid an extra $50, this is how much your, your loan payment would go down. You know what I mean? Because this is just how the amortization schedule works. But we're just going to ignore that for now because our, our main goal is to really get out of this debt in three years. Okay? So with that said, you take the, the scheduled payment in each tab which is right here, it automatically populates it for you. You do not need to, you see this formula here? This formula is populating it for you. You do not have to do anything but enter the information right here, okay? So we're gonna put the, the amounts in here for student loans, it was $599.42, as you can see here. For the credit card, it was $361.52, as you can see here. And for the car note, it was $498.21, which is right here, okay? So that is our bill section. Now, now we're gonna come to other, which includes all of these categories here. We have bank fees, eating out. I budget my groceries by store. I don't just budget, say, groceries $600. I just don't do that because I buy a lot of different stuff at the stores like Costco I sometimes buy clothes from Costco I some I buy a lot of our cleaning products from Costco's sometimes I buy sheets from Costco's or pillows or home stuff and so because of that it gets it can get kind of hard when reconciling your budget each month so I budget by store and that really works well for us but again if you want to just do one lump sum for groceries by all means do that you can change anything you want to in this this um, sheet you can highlight the whole the whole entire um, row here and you can right click and delete it or add insert whatever you want to do okay so I'm just gonna say this fictional family is gonna spend two hundred dollars a month at Costco a hundred dollars at Publix a hundred dollars at Kroger if you're not familiar with Publix it is a grocery chain like Kroger or Wegmans or anything like that and then a hundred dollars a month at Target or Walmart two hundred dollars a month on gas for your car $50 in miscellaneous because that could be anything from, you know, getting your car washed to run into Rite Aid or Walgreens or whatever. And then $200 a month in childcare. Again, like I said, you can change these categories any way you want. Now, at this point in time, I did not put any amounts in for personal spending because honestly, if you really want to do this the hardcore Dave Ramsey way, then you really shouldn't be eating out and you shouldn't have any personal spending. Dave Ramsey always says, bean and rice, rice and beans. That is not the way my husband and I did it. We still had a personal allowance and you can even make it small like, you know, I don't know, $40 a month. You know what I mean? $20 a month for your kids. Of course, life insurance, term insurance, if you have any, some people don't. Investments, you know, Dave Ramsey always says to stop your investing in your 401k or investing period while you are trying to get out of debt. I personally don't agree with that. I, My husband and I both continue to contribute to our 401k because our companies matched a certain percentage and that's pretty much like free money that you're giving away. So. I always say that I suggest you continue to do that. Do not stop because again, that's like free money. But if you're at a company where they're not matching your contribution and you kind of have your own separate IRA account, then I would stop investing in that. Stop um, saving for your college kids, your college funds for your children because you have to focus on getting out of debt. It's fine if you can pay for your, your kids' college, but then if you can't afford to retire, you're, you're gonna be a burden on your children. <clears throat> and you don't want that. You, you want everybody to be financially free. So use this at your discretion. Church, charity, donations, it's completely up to you. I'll just say this family is gonna do $100 a month. Health, fitness, you know, to me, health, to me, health and fitness is important. So, you know, if you want to put something in there, you can. If not, then don't, okay? I'm not going to put any in for our fictional family here, you know, but I'm just saying if you want to, you can. Okay, so our total income coming into the house is $58,000, okay? Um, again, if you have any bonuses or any surprise income that always gets added here, no matter what time of the year it is, it just gets added in. And then, you know, it'll parcel itself out. And I'm going to show you in a second video, another video, how I reconcile this each month, okay? This is just the initial setup that you do every year or anytime your income changes or your expenses change. 
and again it's an average so one month you know your electricity bill can be two hundred dollars a month the next month it could be fifty dollars a month you know it can you know it's an average for the year so it's okay if it fluctuates a little all right so our total expenses oops there we go our total expenses so far is fifty three thousand five hundred nine dollars and eighty cents Okay, that leaves us with an extra $4,400 a year to pretty much put into a sinking fund. All right, guys, well, as I was editing this video today, I noticed that it was really long, so I'm going to stop the video here. Um, go ahead and download the template, play around with it a little bit, and see how you like it. And then next week's episode, I'll cover how we allocate sinking funds and... Um, that way, if you have any questions, you can leave them down below and then I'll answer them for next week's um, video about how to budget sinking funds. Thank you guys so much for watching. I truly hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions concerning uh, the template or any questions on how to create the budget and I'll be more than happy to answer them. You can contact me on any of my social media uh, platforms or my email that, I, uh, that I'll leave down below. Thank you again. I hope you're having a great morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you're watching this and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.